Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm on with today. I will review the second studio album by the rock band The Strokes. I am a Strokes fan. I do think these guys are pretty good. Um, yeah, I do think they are one of the better bands of the 2000s. I would say for sure. Uh, Strokes are pretty great. They are pretty much the best garage rock revival band out there. For sure, I'm not a huge fan of the genre because it sounds pretty one-dimensional and pretty samey to me. But I do like it though, I do think that they have a good sound, they uh, have a pretty complete sound, so I do like it. But I'm not necessarily the biggest fan of it, so keep that in mind. So if you think this is like the greatest album ever, then you know, don't, uh, don't come at me because this is not really my genre. The indie rock, garage rock revival, but... The Strokes are definitely the best thing that came out of that, you know, not, not per se indie rock, but uh, garage rock revival for sure, for, for me at least. So we have 11 tracks, and this album is really short, this album is 32 minutes long. Um, this album is generally liked by everyone, uh, Q even giving it a 5 star rating, which I don't agree with. I thought I agree with it, but... Then I actually listened to the album and I was like, uh, this is good though, this is a good album, but it's, I don't think it's um, an all-time great or something. You can make that debate for Ist is it, but I, would, I wouldn't even go that far to be honest, but that's of course debatable. I mean, Rolex Stone put it the debut as their 500th greatest albums list, so that's the thing to consider. I do think that uh, their debut is probably their best album, let's, uh, let's not um, debate that, or let's not go there. Um, yeah, first track is Whatever Happens. Um, the Strokes are asking whatever happened to their success and what uh, you know happens to um, the follow-up album and uh, what happened to the success from them. They're just wondering if you know what happened in such a short period of time. I believe they released this two years after the debut. Yeah, two years. So this was a pretty consistent follow-up. Um, yeah, and I have to say this is just a pretty solid opening track and not a lot going on, not a lot of risks are taken on this track. Not necessarily that I needed that, but um, you know, I just think it's a good solid opening track, nothing really too flashy or too special here, just like pretty solid. Then we have Reptilia, which is uh, The Strokes' biggest hit, I believe, even bigger than Last Night, so, uh, so that's saying something, I think. It's arguably up there with that song. Um, I do prefer Last Night a bit more because I just think it sounds a bit more genuine whereas this song is a bit too samey for me. I do think that the, the bass line at the beginning is a bit too one note for me. It just it reminds me of like the Ramones which is not a good thing. Uh, but I do like it though. I do think that the production is pretty good. I really like the electric guitar when uh, whenever that electric guitar lick comes in. I really like that. So that is good. I do like that. Um, yeah, Reptilia is just a solid um, rock track. I don't think it's like, you know, the greatest thing ever made. And a lot of like kids that's like cover of Reptilia, like Reptilia uh, um, fill videos are pretty funny though. So I have to I have to thank that song for that, for making a lot of funny videos. Um, but you know, if you butcher Reptilia, you cannot play guitar. Like I mean, let's be honest here. So, um, Reptilia, good song, I think it's a little bit overplayed, I think it's a little bit overrated, but I do, do still like it though, it's a, it's a good track. Now we have Automatic Stop, which is my favorite of the album so far. Um, it has a really like great electric guitar riff, doo -doo 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 -doo. it kind of sounds electronic too in a way, which is interesting. Uh, it's about the same length as Reptilia, I do really like it, I do like the constant guitar riff like that. Um, and the drums and bass are pretty solid too. I really like when the riff kind of picks up the bass towards the latter section of the song and whenever uh, at the ending um, Julian Casablanca's uh, goes like uh, Well, no, it was not the right note. Uh, do, 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 no. Yeah, I cannot do it. I cannot sing, so shut up. Um, but you know, that final note that he does, that is pretty uh, good, I would say. Well, let's try it one more time because the, the last one was really bad. No, no, go away. Yeah, that's probably the best thing I could do. <clears throat> that's a vocal right there. He tries to do that or he does that. Uh, I tried to do it. Kind of feel, kind of feel miserably, but 
but Julian Casablanca did, uh, didn't. Uh, this is my favorite song on the album so far. Really great, uh, catchy guitar riff. I don't think it's like the best thing ever, but it is good. I do like it. Um, by the way, Enemy uh, in 2013. Room on Fire was listed as um, number 360 on Enemy's list of <coughs> the 500 greatest albums of all time. Enemy is like a fucking uh, Britpop indie bloke fucking critic side, so you know they love Blur and Oasis, the, those are like their favorite bands, so go figure. Uh, granted, I love those bands too, but I mean they're not like, I wouldn't say. Um, like I don't think that Blur and Oasis deserve that much, like um, like those many spots on the list. To be honest, like even Blur for for my sake, I love the band, but like I don't think they deserve that many spots. If you go to Enemies list, like holy shit, I mean they're great, granted, but they don't they don't deserve that many plays in my opinion. But sure. Then we have 12, 12.51, which is um, kind of a spacey kind of track. I really like the production. It kind of sounds like. Um, Kind of like you're in one of those inside simulation, kind of like you're in a VR system or something. It sounds pretty trippy. I like the production a lot. Um, the one flaw I have with this track is that it is only two and a half minutes long now. I wish it went on for a little bit longer because I really like the atmosphere, I really like the production. But it was over way too quick, so that was kind of, um, no, unfortunate. But it is a great track, I do love it. Then we have You Talk Way Too Much, kind of like, uh, these next couple of tracks are kind of um, really straightforward, as in the subject matters are really straightforward and the, the riffs are pretty simplistic. Uh, the middle side is definitely, in my opinion, the weakest, weakest side, because the, the opening side is pretty strong with how interesting and diverse it is. And the left side is pretty good too, because it uh, tackles a bit more, seri more serious subjects like, uh, you know, love and... Um, uh, competition, rivalry, you know, stuff like that. It's tech, it tackles more interesting subjects for me, whereas the middle side is more like, you know, partying and drinking and uh, getting it on and shit like that. So this track is basically just uh, saying, you talk way too much, uh, We, you know, we need to get down and just get it on, you know, it's kind of the same shit, so I don't really care for this track. Between Love and Hate is a bit more interesting. This track uh, delves a bit more into the serious nature of Love and Hatred. Uh, definitely more interesting subject matter. I do think that the instrumentation is better too. Uh, it's three minutes long. Uh, by the way, not any track on here is four minutes long. So this is almost like a punk record. So yeah, I, um, I kind of hate it. But not this album though. I hate punk, but um, I do fuck with this album though. But uh, that the tracks are also really you know short. That's you know. Not a huge fan of that because I'm more of a prop guy myself. But um, you know. Sometimes you gotta listen, you know, sometimes a nice, short, catchy record like this is uh, nice too, so there you go. Between Love and Hate is kind of that, you know, it's nice, short and sweet to the point, kind of like every song on there. And then we have Meet Me in the Bathroom, which is uh, probably my least favorite track of the album. This track is really generic and just uh, kind of disgusting in a way, you know. You can read the title, right? I just said the title, so. Um, yeah, this track is like not really like hiding anything. It's uh, it kind of shows everything if you know what I mean. So yeah, I'm not sure if I really want that, but uh, it's there, I guess. So go for it if you want. Now we have Under Control, which is definitely more of a reserved track, I would say. Definitely the band takes it back a bit more, and they're saying we have the situation under control, and we you know we got it on lockdown and. Uh, they're just a bit more like more secure of their shit, whereas with Meet Me in the Bathroom they really went out with, uh, they really had no filter anymore, whereas with Under Control they kind of go back at that, they kind of like reserve themselves a little bit more, they think hey, maybe kids are listening to our record, Ooh, maybe we should tone it down a bit more, so that's what they do here, I do like it a bit more, um, yeah definitely a step up from Meet Me in the Bathroom, so there you go. Then we have The Way It Is, which is... Um, yeah, I have to be honest here, these last couple of tracks are kind of uh, take it or leave it, literally, but um, I do think that the way it is, is nice, it's uh, just nice sweet to the point, but it's only two minutes long though, so it's kind of like, it's literally take it or leave it, so it's kind of whatever, so that's kind of it honestly. And then we have The End There's No End, 
uh, really nice kind of driving beat uh, towards the middle section, kind of nice pickup uh, line at the beginning. Um, du, 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 du. Oh no, yeah, you know, that part is pretty good. I do like the thumping drums and the bass and uh, whenever it picks up later in the chorus, I do like that. Uh, pretty solid track. Um, it's probably my least favorite single of the album, but or Reptilia, but it's uh, I would still say I would still say it's a great single, but I don't think it's my favorite, uh, but it's still good, I think. Um, and I I think this should have been the ending of the album because it has ends twice in the title, but I can't win is the is the final song. Go figure. I can't win. It's kind of an anticlimax for me because um, I just think it's good, but like. It's not amazing, I think, you know, it's it's just kind of like, okay, whatever, you know, it's just, um, meh. So, this final track is good, but it's kind of like the way it is again. It's it's a bit better, it's a bit more, well, progressive, really loosely, but it's a bit more uh, interesting, it's a bit more um, just varied, I would say. And progressive was like the, yeah, like the worst word to use rather. Like, the strokes are anything but progressive, but um, it is a more varied track, I would say, it is more, more of a proper word. Good track, good solid clothing track, not really anything special, to be honest. It's kind of like Whatever Happened Again, part two, but it's just the ending song. So, I, I guess the song is kind of realizing that you can't win the relationship and you're kind of stuck to each other forever. I still think at the end there's no end, it would have been a better, better ending, but it's, you know, it's, it's all good, I guess. So overall, good album, pretty pretty consistent. I really like the. I I would say the first, the first side of the album is really good, and the second side is kind of um, it's kind of iffy for me. You talk way too much is good. Uh, I do like that song with "Free Love and Hate" is still good. So I would say the first six tracks are pretty solid, and then "Meet Me in the Bathroom" is kind of bad. Under control is uh, meh. The way it is is kind of whatever. The end is no end. is a great track, and I can't win is uh, it's good. It's kind of like whatever happened. It's good, but it's nothing special to be honest. So good album overall. I did like it. Um, I'm not. I don't like it as much as is this is. Of course, nothing is really gonna be that album. I think so. I would give this album a 8.6. It's a good album. It's a pretty solid rock album, but I don't think it's anything. Other than that, so there you go, it's just good, but it's not amazing or something, it's not better than it is it. I thought that for a while, then I actually listened to this album and I was like, nah, not really, it's good, it's probably still probably the second best Strokes album, so there you go. So there you go, the, the Strokes, Room on Fire, Room on Fire, that's probably my favorite song from them. No, wait, I was right, well, fucking hell, I was right. The Strokes, Room on Fire, why did I fucking pause there? I thought it was a single, but it's the fucking title of the album. Room on Fire by The Strokes, good album. Pretty solid rock album, but nothing really else. It's not really special, but it's good. So there you go. Uh, Room on Fire by The Strokes. Uh, listen to it if you want. Um, Spotify, YouTube, whatever you know, whatever you use. I use it both, so there you go. Um, if you want to know, no one gives a shit. Thank you for watching this video. Like and subscribe channel for future lives. One, let me know what you want to see in an upcoming video. Uh, yeah, the strokes. On, on, I always want to say is it because it's so like it's so iconic to their brand. But uh, room on fire. The strokes, room on fire. Uh, it's a good album. Check it out for yourself if you want. If you love garage rock revival music, then this is right up your alley. You probably know it. This probably made you fall in love with the genre as we speak. So there you go. So let me know what you think about it in the comments down below and I will see you in the next video. Peace.